This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans is celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high-quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP.com today to learn more about their history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Hello. Isn't that fun? It, it really is. Mike Keith, these were handed out. No, at, no. Or not. they were sold. Sold. I'm sorry. They were <laughs> sold. I don't want to shortchange you. At the draft party. Yes. And I have gotten my hands on one. For charity. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. For the Titans Foundation. Yeah. What a, what a way to give back. You get one of these. You give money to a good cause. Isn't it just nice? It's really spooky. Mike. This is so much fun. It's really not. No, it really is. And the best part was people coming up and handing you your own head <laughs> and saying, will you sign it? Well, sure. Yeah. I, I might I have did. you sign this one that I've obtained. Okay. Well, can we set it down now and start the OTP? No. Can I set it here, maybe? Yes. For the people who are listening to the OTP, we apologize. <laughs> It's it's a Mike Keith fat head, you guys. It's not a fat head. This is, I mean, this is a big old head. It's a big old <laughs> what head. You, what and else are we going to call it? Probably true. <laughs> well, this is the first time that Amy and I have had a chance to do the OTP, just the two of us, in quite a long time. Yeah, did you miss me? Probably a month. Yeah, I, it really has been a minute since you and I have done an OTP together. Because we're going to kind of talk about the entire draft season and everything that went on on and off the air to kind of bring the OT people up to speed. Part of the reason that we have not done an OTP together, and also the reason Amy was not on the OTPs with Coach Mack and Rep Bryan where they did the position breakdowns, is because Amy had to have a surprise surgery <laughs> in the middle of draft season. I did. You know, we were, what, two weeks out from the draft, and... I am informed by a doctor. Three weeks out. Three weeks out. Yes, yes, yes. We're three weeks out, and I'm informed that I need to have my gallbladder removed. Can't stay any longer. Time is up. Got to go. So that was a funny surprise. and We um, had a long discussion about it. Yeah. It, it was one of those things where it doesn't have to happen right now. Like, I wasn't dying. There was no major emergency. Um, but it had to happen. Well, I mean, because, I mean, you were... I remember when this was. It was April 5th. Yeah. Wow. Because you said, uh, I've got to go see the doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out if they can do this, but I am not missing the f draft. <laughs> <laughs> that was the direct quote. Yeah, I did say that. Loudly. And I more, did. And more than once. Well, okay, so I've missed a draft. Right. Two years ago, I missed the draft. This was the first draft that I was going to be able to do since 2019, maybe, right. that I was going to be able to be on site with Titans Radio doing broadcast coverage. Usually, myself and Ashley Farrell go to the draft site. And but we didn't do that this year well, because our player wasn't there the last couple years. Yeah, the last couple and years. And of course, we've been this burned. year, there he is. There he is, hugging J the commissioner. J.C. Latham, great yeah. decision by the vice president of broadcasting. Yeah, to, it's to okay. not send. Yeah, brilliant. It, well, I mean, it, the decision had been made, and so I was going to be able to be on site doing Titans radio coverage for the entire weekend, and I wasn't going to miss that. So I had to. So you said what you said. So I said what I said. More than once. <laughs> and then had to schedule the removal of an organ that doesn't even matter. Like, I don't even but, know why we but have it's a surgery. Gallbladder. It is surgery. And it was a. The recovery was tougher than I anticipated. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was a real thing that had to happen. And um, it just timed out to where it was like. If we do this right now, I can be recovered and ready to go in time to do 
Titans Radio. But you were not missing the f- draft. I was not going to miss the draft. <laughs> I was not interested in that. <laughs> and so if my organs were going to have to just figure it out for a minute, that's what we were going to do. And everything went well, and it turned out fine, and I feel great now. Um, if you ever get the chance to have your gallbladder removed, I say do it because well, I feel much better I now. just just want to point out, though, that – Amy could have easily done the shows with Coach Mack and Rhett. She would have been great. Oh, I would have she loved to. She was not left out. Mm-mm. It was not Mike thinking, oh, he. we made a decision together yeah. that because those shows, which were so well produced by Ashley Farrell. They were great. And uh, Jack Mumbert and Max Walsh, great job putting them together and our entire team working on all of that. We shot for three hours. Mm-hmm. And th- the reason we did it, is because Coach Mack and Rhett put in so much incredible work, I mean, phenomenal work, in in grading this. I mean, we have somebody on our staff with Titans Radio and Coach Mack who members of NFL teams, you know, he knows everybody because of his tenure and how he is and how many people he's gotten started in the business who still look up to him. And people will stop him, call him, text him, and ask him his thoughts on certain players to see if it matches with what they think because there's a pretty decent chance that he taught them how to grade players at some point in their life. Right. And so we have that. We tease Coach Mack, and he teases us unmercifully back. (laughs) But the reality is we have this amazing resource And he has taught Rhett. And so Rhett now has this knowledge, which helps him go back through a lot of the details with Coach Mack. And they are this two-man machine. And we thought to ourselves, let's do these shows. Mm -hmm. And we were going to split them up. um, And you were going to host some of them. And I was going to host some of them. We were going to go back and forth. And then the gallbladder thing happens. So we push through and we we do that. Yep. And I, I hope... The OT people enjoyed them. I, I hope that you felt like you got something out of them. I hope it introduced more people to the OTP and to our Titans YouTube channel and to everything that we've got going on there, besides just us. There's a mm-hmm. lot of wonderful stuff that's there. But I also hope, more than anything else, is that it meant that you knew more than your friends. Right. Because that's my if, – if you are one of the OT people, if you follow us, if you do anything, I hope that you feel like we give you something that gives you the ability to converse with anybody and feel confident. Absolutely. And really, I'm, if we do that again, which I think we should because it's a really great thing to do um, – What I did, because I was not on them, so I had listened to them, um, I went back on draft day and re-listened to all of them. You watched all five? Oh, yeah, I did. While I was, you know, doing things, working on my notes, making sure sure I had everything in order. But they were such a good kind of primer for what was about to come that night. It was a SparkNotes version of what you needed to know for the draft. And there were so many things well, that they talked about. And how many things did they turn out to be right about? Yeah. I, I mean, it's so many things turned out to be spot on with what happened throughout the night as round one unfolded. Um, so if you're doing it right, this is what you do. You listen to them as they come out while you're driving in your car, doing whatever. And then the day watch, of the draft. Or watch. Yeah, we have can, the video component yeah, now. But either Kids way. Kids like the video. Okay, but even if you're watching the video, you still have to use your ears to hear the information. So either way, you have to listen to it. If you, you have want to, to get your eyeballs, it. Yeah, if you want to get your eyes involved, great. Phenomenal. <laughs> but I think that either way, they are a perfect draft day pregame. I think they are. And, it was and, great. I just I just want people to know how good they are mm-hmm. because they put so much into it. And I hope that if you had a chance to listen to the nine hours that we did on Titans Radio, you get that about them and you understand that these are not just some guys reading out of books. If they are, it's because they've written their own books. Right. Rhett and Coach write down all their own stuff. Coach Mack – 
doesn't use a computer. He still does. He has his MacBook. He has a, a notebook, the notebook. <laughs> like what we had in seventh grade. Yeah. And he and he still got all thirty nine of them that he has done in his career. And he is, references he them. He references. Them. He'll go back and look up a certain guy that he knew. He remembers that he wrote things on when that person was going through the draft. I mean, it's incredible the amount of information that he has in his brain. And to have him and Rhett do it together. And we were able to talk at the Combine. They did an OTP with me explaining their process and going through how they do all of this. And if you haven't watched it or listened to it, please, please do. Because it's uh, it's really good and it takes you behind the scenes on how they get all of that information it into their brain. It will be brains. shocking how accurate they are. I, I was blown away as the entire three days of the draft were going on and they had their board. We had it right in front of us. The way that people were marking off in almost the exact order. It was wild. Ramon Foster adds a lot to it as well. Ramon Foster is great. And this was the first time I had really gotten to work with him because he has been on Titans radio for the last year on the sidelines because I wasn't there. And so we never really got to work together on anything. And um, what an intelligent human being. And just, I mean, so nice and so fun. And he laughs at my jokes, which, oh, I appreciate, you know. And um, incredible to work with him because he provides so much insight that is so different from the rest of us. Right. And he is just so knowledgeable, not only about the position that he played, but just the NFL as a whole and how things operate. And I, I mean, I just I could talk to him for hours and hours. And I am so glad that he's a part of Titans Radio because, holy smokes, what he brings to the table is just incredible. And I just really enjoyed working with him. He's a much younger version of Coach Mack, too, in that because he has the same sort of personality, which is Ramon, very, very good guy. What you hear on the radio, see on TV, that is how he is. Uh, he is a tremendous human being, hard worker. You know, he's got his own notebook, too, where he's watched tape. I mean, he's not just showing up, you know, reading out of – his notebook is much more refined. It's much though. more refined. He's got, I mean, he, but a former but, NFL player notebook. But he has friends who were stars in the league, and then he has friends who were journeymen, and then he has people in between. And he was very nice to all the people that he worked with with the Steelers, and so they all know him, whether that be in equipment or in the the staff that does the field or the cafeteria staff or where. I mean, he's that sort of person, like Mac. And so he has a Rolodex and can find out things and can learn things. And part of that is what you hear when Ramon's doing it and when Coach Mack is doing it, is that it's, it's not just, I graded the players and here's what I see. They know some background. There's some stuff they can't tell you, but it, you have to take their comments as providing context. Yeah. These are educated opinions based on conversations that you won't ever know, and I won't ever know, that they had with certain people about, hey, what do you really think about this guy? Or, hey, they aren't going to take a guard, are they? Or, you know, people know stuff. Right. And it's a fraternity of people that is incredibly tight. Uh -huh. They're in it. Oh, yeah. You have that with the Titans radio group and with the OTP and with all the things we're able to work it into with Ramon. And that's why I wanted Ramon to join us when you couldn't take part last year is because I just thought it's a different perspective. It's and, a great perspective. Well, and all the way through, we've tried to find different perspectives because I think that's what gives you a little bit of a shakeup. I mean, Cody Allison was on the sidelines, and he did an amazing job starting with us. He had trained as a reporter before he became a lawyer. And then he got smart, and he got out of the business. <laughs> now he's a wildly successful lawyer. <laughs> Jonathan Hutton is Jonathan Hutton. Yeah. He's, he's just, just one of the best broadcasters that you'll ever find, and he's a relationship guy, and he's probably – 
the most naturally talented person I've ever worked with. He is just that. He's good at whatever he does. Yep. Hutton is just Hutton. He's, yep. a, he's amazing. And then you take his place, you work for the team, but you also come from this background where you had worked in the Missouri football office, you had worked for the Ravens, you had worked for the Colts, you come to us, you've been around football as part of an inner circle in a different way, and so our guys know you in the hall, and so everybody sort of has that relationship to where, you know, the first game you ever worked, you're able to be in the locker room telling us what's going on during the longest game in NFL history, a different perspective. And then Ramon comes in, and he adds a very different perspective. So I think that's what you're – that's what you're always trying to mix it up with. You can't stay the same. No, absolutely not. And I think that one of the things about Titans Radio in all of our broadcasts that we do, whether it's during a game on Sunday or whether it's the draft or anything in between our TV show or our radio shows, whatever, is that there are so many different perspectives represented. And so you get this full picture of what is happening within the Tennessee Titans and the National Football League because everybody is coming from a different place. Everybody contributes a different um, perspective on what's happening, but also just has different conversations with people. We're all living in a little bit of a different world as it relates to this big Titans world. And I think that's what makes Titans radio coverage so good. Well, we work for the team. Of course. Everybody knows we work for the team. We don't make any bones about that. I'm Titans Amy. Right. Like, right. duh. And <laughs> and so, I mean, I think that's important. You know, when CBS does our games, they have a very different perspective than what we do. We're for the Titans. Mm -hmm. We are. I mean, we are. That doesn't mean you're demeaning the other team or the other organization or whatever. Heard it. That people are suspecting that you are dropping little nuggets right. and little things for people to pick up on. Right. And you know something that you're trying to tell the people, like you're blinking three times and that means a certain thing. I, I, guys, I don't want to break your hearts. It, he's it, he's just not that good. Yet. No. He's no. just not that good. It's true. I mean, it, it, he's great. It's fun. He's not that good, though. That's, yeah. It's, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really. But you're right. When, uh, but like, okay, so my job in all of this, as we tear down the fourth wall for the OT people, I'm the host. Mm -hmm. I, driving I, the ship. I don't watch the tape. I don't grade the players. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I I could. You know, I could be the guy Coach Mack taught. And, uh, you know, I could, but the thing that I wanted to do is he's so good, and I've, I've worked with so many good people over the years, and you just learn, pass him the ball. Mm -hmm. Just pass him the ball. Well, but I think that's what makes you so good well, is that you yeah, – No, whatever. and we're going to have a moment of being nice, which you know I don't enjoy. But what makes you so good at your job as a host is that because there's no need to be the guy – you can let everybody else do what they do Until the Falcons draft Michael Penix. And well, then, and then, then, I, and then, then everybody I kinda, Then I become a talk show host again. Well, but And that does happen, and I wish it didn't. But like, That was crazy. Though. It was crazy. I mean, that was crazy cakes and continues to be crazy cakes. Okay, I'll but, never understand. So I do have little moments where I lose it. <laughs> and, I, and I completely admit, like I did 
on the kickoff, you know, that I thought I went a little crazy about how I thought the kickoff should be changed. And now it's oh changed. So I'm very happy. I'm, I'm sure I'll be on to something else. But <laughs> the point was with the videos is they said, share more. And you do. Give more. So I, I am doing things to prepare for the draft, like looking at the teams, like understanding some things about, like I did one about trading down and how hard it is to trade down. It was not a message. <laughs> it, was, it was just a point that, you know, one of our former GMs told, really jumped me. He didn't really tell me he jumped me. <laughs> that happens to you a lot. Well, I said something really doofy, and I, I went in, and this, you know, and I said, um, well, did you think about trading down there? You know, I mean, like, park's closed. Uh, <laughs> you uh, know, how and, you talk. <laughs> and the moose should have told you. But the point, but the point was, I mean, it, it, maybe you have this in your job, OT people, but I – do you ever have the moment you say something and you see yourself say it and you say, oh, Lord Jesus, could, is there any way I could rewind? Yeah. No. Suck well, it back in. Well, Suck that was the in. moment I said, do you, did you think about trading down? And the response that I get was much like Amy's response that she's going to do. The, <laughs> she's going to work the draft. It was obscene. Yes. And yet the, the point was made. It's like, look doofus um you gotta you gotta have an offer it's got to be a good offer and you've got to have players that you're willing to take and so I wanted to make that point just because everybody had well scenario one is trade down scenario one is trade down for everybody guess what we didn't see in the <laughs> in the in the top nine picks in the draft a trade down right I laid out two that if Minnesota were going to trade up, as had been reported, that they were going to have to way overpay. A report out this morning suggests that they were going to have to give up 11 and 23 and their first round pick next year to go up to three to get New England. That's what they offered New England, which if you look at the draft points chart, that is a terrible deal. Yeah. It's a horrendous deal. Right. And yet they were going to have to do something like that. to be true? I mean, most of the time, I would Maybe. say. Maybe, yeah. I would um, because not saying we're smart, but it's just like. Because we have the benefit of context. Right, and, and sharing some perspective, it's not, <laughs> it's not coming from a place of trying to set up an agenda. It's no. just, we're like you. We love the draft. <laughs> no, we love the draft. We love we, the draft. Yeah, like, I'm not glad it's over. No. Pe people this week have been like, aren't you glad it's over? And it's like, no, no. what am I going to do now? No, I talked to Charles Davis on the phone this morning. He's glad the draft's over. Well, Charles Davis is probably real tired. Yes. I mean, he's been working hard. But we're, he's 32 teams. We're one we're team. We're one team. And it's our team. So, mm -hmm. we're, man, we're as fired up as you are about the whole thing. And so in maybe sharing is bad. No, I, I sharing is not bad. But I think that it is forgotten that the benefit of context gives us the ability to see things in a way that the average but, person looking from the outside in what, can't see. But we can't always explain the context because that is privileged information. But I, 
And that's the reality of it. Well, but some of it is also history. Educated guesses. Yeah, based on history. And I don't want to beat the guy. Back in my day, the draft was held on, you know, it's like, no. That's Max's job. You yeah, can't be Mac. that guy. Yeah, I mean, he was there in 1936 <laughs> when they did the first one. Uh, <laughs> he, he was sitting up front. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> but, but the whole thing really is, I mean, some things do, some things don't change with how the draft is going to flow. Right. And, some people who are newer to it don't have the benefit of having seen it. And you want to, I, I don't know. It would be helpful. I just know that when I was growing up here, if we'd have had the draft, if we'd have had an NFL team 17 miles from my hometown of Franklin, mm -hmm. I, I would have been unhinged about the draft. Yeah. And guess what? I'm still unhinged about the draft because it's just that part of it it's so much fun. Yeah. It is. It really is. It's like I share something else that was fun. Our own Ashley Farrell got to fly up on the plane Friday morning to go get J.C. Latham. She and Todd Gray from our staff got to be on the plane. And so they leave at 8. Yeah, something like that. And mm -hmm. they fly to Detroit. They wait a little while. And then J.C. Latham comes. And then they fly back. Mm -hmm. And so... She got to give you, and we've shown some of that, haven't we? Yeah, we put some of it on social. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, here are a couple of examples. So, who's on the plane with him, just to give you a few names? Uh, his dad, Jerome Latham. Mm -hmm. His brother, younger brother, Langston Latham. Uh, his best friend, Makai Jordan, who's known as Kai. I think they went to IMG together. They did. Mom's on the plane. Mm -hmm. Stepmom's on the plane. Yep. And so, we got to ask him some questions Here's one we'll we'll let you see and listen to, and that is what draft night was like in Detroit for J.C. Latham and his family. Words can't convey exactly what goes on in the heart, but we're we're just very humbled and blessed. It really gave me motivation. So like I was just really like excited, happy. I felt everything, all the emotions, like all at once. I had goosebumps for him. My hands were sweating, anxiety <laughs> was running, <laughs> adrenaline running. <laughs> But yeah, it was, a, uh, it was a pretty cool moment, though. It was a pretty cool moment. Amazing. It, it was amazing. And um, it was a big exclamation point on a hard work and a hard journey and a job well done. Ultimately, I was proud, kind of, just like, that's my big brother. I can really say that. Yeah, like, my big brother's in the league now. And that was cool. So let's show another one. Here's the family. Outside of media, outside of a gathering, outside of anything, just sharing. Mm -hmm. What should the Titans expect from J.C. Latham? On the field, a dominant person, a person who really wants to win, so he's going to do whatever it takes to win. Off the field, you're going to get a goofball. Somebody who's just going to be a high-energy person, loves to be childish, keep everything funny. You know, somebody like you never have to worry about, though. So you're going to get a great person at the end of the day. 100% dedication, super big heart, and he's going to get the job done. You can depend on him. He's going to get the job done. He's going to always uplift the people around him, always going to support the people around him. So you're going to get a great person off the field. But on the field, it's like a it's like a whole different person, a different mentality. You're going to get a dominant person, somebody do whatever they got to take to win. See, that I mean, that's cool stuff to get to even do. Oh, yeah. I mean, the best thing Ashley showed us was J.C. Latham playing Madden as the Titans yeah. as he was going to join the Titans because he was their first-round pick. Playing Madden right now on the PJ. We're the first, I think we're the first to do this. <laughs> Throw me a pick. Oh, that's a pick. No, I'm winning. Oh. I'm winning. A, I'm the better Madden God. player. This is a touchdown. Look. On, separation. Man. Look at the separation. God, come on, Look man. Look at the separation. It's not about separating zones. It's a dot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so the linebacker got beat, you know, no big deal. I'll be him 28-0. If JC is your OC, you need to get rid of him. <laughs> <Nah>. Quick. <laughs> Man threw four interceptions in the first quarter. He ain't getting out of hand. It's two touchdowns. I didn't know that was out of hand. <laughs> I'm so impressed by the foresight to bring your Madden equipment to the draft because you're going to want to play it when you have some downtime, but also maybe on the – private plane after you get drafted he's still 21 i mean but boy he does not seem like he's 21 most not at times. all 
No. And it was funny because when he was picked, I was told, we were on the air, so I didn't know all this. I, I don't think people were very excited initially overall by the pick. That they were, they thought it was going to be Joe Alt. Oh, yeah. And then, they, because Joe Alt had been the guy in 90% of the mocks. Yep. And then in every other mock, it had been a receiver. Yeah. If it wasn't Joe Alt. So there were very, now Charles Davis got it right. He had J.C. Latham and, and other people did as well. So kudos to those who, who got it right. But in most cases, the Titans fans had not been conditioned to think J.C. Latham was a possibility. Well, it all took a 180, in my opinion, within 24 hours because Rand Carthon comes to the press conference 30 minutes after it happens and says he's a left tackle. Mm -hmm. And so people go, oh, okay, all, right. all right, that's yeah. good. And Brian Callahan and everybody talks about how much Brian's dad, Bill Callahan, and the Titans love this guy. And they're like, oh, okay, I get that. And then the next day, the fans experience what Ashley experienced and then what you and I experienced and everybody within Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park experienced. This is a special guy. Oh, yeah. And you see how big he is and you experience how smart he is. And you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It checks out. This is going to really work. Yep. And so that had changed, you know, within, I mean, less than 24 hours yeah, all, hey, Alt's a good player. And I thought, my opinion, entering the draft was the Titans were going to end up with either Alt or Latham. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen. When Alt went five, I thought Neighbors was going to go six to the, to the Giants. And then I thought it was going to be Latham. Yeah. That's why on the air we were talking about Latham. And then on the air we do get a little earlier confirmation about it. Uh, because of what the plan's going to end up being, press conferences and things like that. So, right. yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons you want to listen to Titans Radio on draft night. Because we know. A little, I mean, not like. We don't know. Not no. like an hour before, but no, like. No, but like. A, a, a minute, minute or two. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Can't say it, but we know it. We know. So, but I mean, I thought that's what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I, so in my mind. I had never played it towards anything else. I loved Roma Dunze. I mean, he's a really good receiver, and Dallas Turner and Leatu Latu and mm -hmm. several guys. I mean, I thought they were really good. Um, I did not think the Titans were going to be able to trade out at seven. No. Because I just didn't think the offer was going to be there for them to get a player that I knew. I mean, let's, I mean they brought Latham in for, for a visit for one of the 30 visits. And they did not bring in a lot of the guys who could have been the seventh pick. Yes. They brought in a lot of guys who could have been the 15th to 20th pick. They brought in guys who could have been the second round pick. They brought in guys that if they got a third back, and then there were day three picks. But there weren't a lot. So you're sitting there going, okay. And JC's just and, – and you're like, yeah, okay. I yeah, get that. Well, and after you talk to him and – um just really kind of get to know him as a person and hear the way that he thinks about football and talks about football and how excited he is about that. It all just so fits the expectation of what Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon would want in a Tennessee Titan. It all fits. Well, but the fact that he's more or less lived on his own since he was 15. Well, but I mean, that's part of it. By his own choice. Yeah. He's... My man wanted to play football. He he knows what he wants to do, and anybody plays for Nick Saban too. I don't care what team you root for, you'll agree. You know, if you play for Nick Saban, it's serious business. The other thing I went back and watched too is what Nick Saban's reaction was when he got picked. Nick Saban was on TV. Yeah, he genuinely loves J.C. Latham as a as a human being. Mm. I mean, this is a this is a fav. You could tell this is a favorite. Yeah. Yeah, he's a player, but this is one of his guys. That's so nice. Yeah. Well, and it's got to be special, too. It was his last team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't. You should go back and watch it because it is very genuine. He, he, he pulls the two things together, him as a player and him as a person. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't do the whole thing of, well, he's – 
you know, he doesn't go too far on the person thing to make you think, oh, well, maybe he's not quite as good. I mean, he makes it clear he's really good. Yeah. But that he genuinely loves the guy's demeanor and loves all that he does. That makes me so happy. Yeah. I'm going to go back and watch. Who is the Titans draft pick you are most interested to see when they get here for rookie minicamp next week? Oh, it's got to be the big man sweat. It has to be. I'm so fired up with... Tavondre Sweat. Yes. I can say his name now. (laughs) Had a little problem on Friday night. It's okay. Had a little difficulty. Everything's okay. Wasn't good. No, but it's so good now. And it's going to be so good when he is there with Big Jeff and they can do big, angry man things. I'm so excited. I just think that the way that it is going to change this Titans defense and the things that they are able to do, <laughs> I'm fired up. I'm really excited about it. And and I have been informed that my man can catch touchdowns. And do Against you, Oklahoma State last yeah, year. Yeah, and you know what I like more than anything? A big man touchdown. I like a big man touchdown. I love them. Well, I love them. The, the point about Sweat and, and that play you're talking about just emphasizes – what he can be. Mm-hmm. The feeling is, is he has legitimate interior pass rush ability. So this is not a guy who's there to play first and second down so the center or the guard can't move him. Oh, no. He, he's, he's got three down potential. He's going to have to get his butt in good shape if he wants to play three downs mm-hmm. because they don't want him to play 20 snaps a game. They want him to have a chance to play – you know, 40 snaps. Man, you're going to rotate. I mean, I know that. I mean, Jeff's crazy. Jeff, the fact that Jeff plays 90% of the snaps is but I, another point to why Jeff is just nuts. But I love him being with the crazy man. When that is the bar, like, what do they say about all ships rising? Yeah. Uh, uh, big Jeff A rising makes tide lifts all ships. Ships, yeah. Or all boats, whichever you prefer. Big Jeff does that. He does. He raises the expectation well, I mean, of everybody. We have one of, if not the best player at that position in the NFL now that Aaron Donald's retired. Yep, I agree with that. He is one of the, if not the best, he's one of the two or three best. He's a, he's a, not a good player. He's an he's exceptional a, player. He's an exceptional player. And, he's, and Jeff wants to win, too. Mm-hmm. That's Jeff's whole thing. That's one of the reasons we love Jeffrey Simmons as much as we do, and there are so many good reasons. But he is big Jeff. He is the leader. This is his football team. And this player is going to have to acquiesce to him or it's just not going to be pleasant. Right. And I think Sweat's size and his ability is incredibly exciting. Some were surprised why he was picked as highly as he was, and I can tell you exactly why. And this is one of the things that I do is I map out, and and the media relations staff provides it too, but I map it out for our team how many players that the Titans have on the roster at different spots. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, 65 players coming into the draft, now 72 players post-draft, which means – you don't mean, need as many undrafteds because you're going to sign some veteran free agents too. So they're different considerations. That's why the Titans weren't going to take a trade where they added three extra seventh round picks. They don't need that. Right. They, they don't need that. Right. A mid round pick or a number three next year or a number three this year would have made sense. But if you're not getting that kind of deal, you're not, this is not a year where you say, man, we need a bunch of late picks because we don't have any cap room or we need 30 undrafteds. or And that happens. Right. And of course it does. It was not this year for the Titans. The other part of that was the fact that they have six entering the draft. The Titans have six defensive linemen on the roster. Some of them may be starters, but the only established starter is Big Jeff. So... The Titans need a defensive lineman who has the potential to be a starter. You were not going to get that player at number 106 because after you got past the first eight, nine, ten defensive linemen, the talent dropped off to where those players were probably at best 
developmental or rotational players in terms of how they projected. Sweat projects as a starter, even with what happened with the DWI, even with what happened, what's, what his weight is and where he is and things like that, he projects as a starter. If you were going to get him, you, the Titans were going to have to take him at 38 because there was no third-round pick. Maybe he's there in the third round. But we're not going to be there but, in the third the round. the Titans are not going to be there in the <laughs> third round. So they made that decision to get to seven defensive linemen, to get a different sort of player than what they have, to get a guy who projects as a starter or an immediate rotational player, even if he doesn't take the first snap, then he's going to be out there pretty fast and he's going to be rushing the passer in the fourth quarter in certain situations from an interior position. Those are the things about the draft. Coach Mack says there's the draft and then there's the quarterback draft. It's 100% true. It's why six quarterbacks went in the first 12 picks. Some years you also have spots where you have to go higher at certain positions because you know the level of quality will not be nearly the same when you pick again. It's like getting Cedric Gray Mm -hmm. in round four. That's incredible value. Cedric Gray was rated more highly than that. When the draft started on Saturday, I'm sitting and going, Cedric Gray, Cedric Gray, Cedric Gray. <laughs> Let Cedric Gray be there. Again, I don't evaluate film. I watch Carolina play because my son went to school there. Right. And so it's like, Cedric Gray's good. He's a pretty good player. Good player. Yeah. He's at an undervalued position. Linebackers are always going to go lower today. Yep. Because the position is undervalued, just like running backs, just like safeties, just like guards. It just is. Yeah. And – Still, that was incredible value. The player I'm most excited to see, though, is James Williams out of Miami. Yeah. Because – The question mark. Yeah. I'm still – you know, I'm still a recruiting geek. I'm still a big college football fan. James Williams was a five-star, five-star, five-star. He was the number 15 player in America. He was a player that if you follow how recruiting goes, he's going to go to Miami and they're going to play him at a safety spot – but you don't think that he's going to be a safety if he goes to the next level. You don't think mm-hmm. – I mean, a player who's 6'4", 218, who becomes 6'4", 232, that player is not going to play safety in the NFL anymore. No. For those of us old enough to remember the Steve Atwaters of the world – um, the David Fulchers of the world for Denver and Cincinnati respectively – that size safety doesn't exist anymore. In our case, Tank Williams. Right. That player does not exist anymore. When I saw James Williams' safety Miami, it didn't immediately register to me, and I pulled up my notes. I'm like, oh, gosh, this is the guy who was the incredibly highly rated player. He had not shown up as a highly rated player in this draft because he's a projection. Mm-hmm. Which is – and, and projections are never going to go as high as they should. Right. He is a much higher round talent in terms of his physical. But can he play linebacker? This group, under Denard Wilson, the defensive coordinator, and Anthony Robinson, who runs all the player personnel for Rand Carthon, they think he fits – what this defense wants to do, and that he projects. These are the players over the years that Baltimore and Pittsburgh have made a living Mm -hmm. bringing in and saying, we can teach him this because he has a skill set that's not like – I mean, to be that big, run 4-6-5, to be able to cover tight ends. um, You can't. Uh, I mean, there's something to be said for just traits, and he has the traits that you want. You can teach him the rest. You can coach that stuff. You can coach that stuff. Yeah. So let's get him in here. Well, he's going to be in here next week. I'm very excited. Seat Geek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. 
SeatGeek, where Titans fans can fan. Can fan. I did too much of it, didn't I? Well, it's okay. All right, let's see what else I have here. I was worried about my shoes because yours are so clean and mine are so scuffy. I like your shoes. Thanks. I like yours. Thank you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think we got it all. That's, I mean, this was good. By the way, um, OT people, we value your opinion. Hopefully, you've enjoyed Senior Bowl, Combine, the different OTPs. The way we do focus on this stuff, we certainly focused on the free agent signings and the coaching change and the new coaches and things like that. I mean, it's been a lot of football. It's been a lot of hardcore football for three months. Let us know what you like. Um, We appreciate our partner at 104.5 The Zone who carried all nine hours of our draft coverage. We appreciate our Titans radio affiliates Mm -hmm. who did that as well. We know some couldn't. Yeah. uh, Because you've got high school sports, you've got Tennessee or Vanderbilt or Alabama or Kentucky or Mississippi State or Ole Miss baseball. Yeah, it is baseball season as well. And SEC baseball is huge. We get it. I mean, we don't want to take anything away from that. The 104.5 The Zone app was very helpful in all of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We appreciate the positive feedback. But let us know. Uh, Let us know, you know, because we change it every year. We do. We'll change it again in 2025. We might consider sending Amy back to – the draft next year, based on the fact that the one year we don't go to the draft, we draft somebody who's at the draft. I don't know, man. I just don't want to have any surgeries in 2025. Like, I'm having surgeries every year at this point. Two kids, no more gallbladder. Like, 2025 is the year of no surgeries. That's what I'm rooting Starting for. Starting with the second half of 2024? Well, yeah. I mean, shoot, we've already ruined it. So, if there's anything else that we need to do, we may as well do it in 24, but nothing in 25. But we're going to be flying for the next six weeks because we've got rookie mini camp Mm -hmm. and then you're into the OTAs, which is great. I love OTAs. Then you've got the veteran mini camp. Yep. And they actually are doing the same thing that Vrabel did last year. They're having a week of OTAs after the veteran mandatory mini camp. Smart. And so then the team will basically break mid June, but from now until mid June, I mean, we're flying. We've got an NFL owners meeting in Nashville. Very exciting. In May, mm-hmm. um, which I don't know. Have we ever had the owners meetings here? Or one to this level? One to this level? Because I don't know. There are four. Yeah. And the spring one is obviously the biggest. The one in December is not. It's just like nah. they get together and it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of business stuff that's yeah. way over our heads. Uh, this next one. This is probably the second biggest one to the big one. Well, in the and spring. they do the the front office accelerator as part of mm-hmm. this one. I think they do some coaching accelerator as part of this one, and it's going to be here next month. Is this the one where it was officially voted on that Nashville was going to get the draft? Is this? Am I yes. correct in remembering that it was in May? Yeah, because I've been to that. Because we I've sent been you to this down one when we thought Nashville was going to get it. Yep. And to Atlanta. And by the way, it's great. Little message to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get the draft on the schedule. Yes, please bring it back. Because hey, come on, Detroit, thumbs up. Yeah, they did great. Much love to Detroit. You did it. We didn't think you could do it. You but did you, it. But you did it. But now it's on. Yeah, now it's on. Bring it back. It's on. Yeah. Every, every Titans fan that I've talked to, I was talking to some on Sunday. They're like. When are we getting the draft back? Because I don't want to hear about Detroit. Yeah, it's a weird thing that I never thought I would be so competitive about. Because, listen, until the draft was in uh, Nashville. So, 2015 is when they started moving it. Right. From 2015 until 2019 when it came to Nashville, I hated that the draft moved. I hated it. I went in one place all the time, forever. I like consistency, much like the Combine. I didn't want it to move. I like change. Then, I know you do. Then, it comes to Nashville in 2019, and I immediately switch course, and now I am so competitive about it. It's a completely different vibe to where I started only wanting it in one place. Now I want it to go all over the world. Let's take it everywhere because I want to beat them. I want to beat every city that could ever host the draft because we do it better than all of you fools. Might have the Super Bowl here before the draft, though. Really? Yeah. Is that 
give you goosebumps, make you kind of tingly. <laughs> I mean, we might not get the draft for a while because of the construction. And the thing that was so interesting about the 2019 draft that people did not know is when they would see the shots of Broadway, mm -hmm. there were some naysayers, we'll call them, who said, there's no way there's 250. What who they said that? I'm not getting into that. <sighs> but there were some people who said it. Hmm. And what they didn't know is there were no shots of across the river where there were almost as many people over there for all three At days. All, there were the activations. Right. That's where they had giant TVs. There was a whole different party across the river. Well, that was what was so great about the Nashville draft is if you wanted to come down and be on Broadway and have an adult beverage and hang out with your friends or whatever, you could absolutely do that. And we had less than five arrests. Yeah. It was great. And I mean, it was, it was totally under control. People, people did a good job. One was an NFL player who climbed a for another team, thank goodness. Yeah. Who decided to climb a fence at two o'clock in the morning or something? Not, not great. Some people do weird things. But people just, hey, the, you know, Steeler fans hung out with Seahawks fans, hung out with Rams fans, hung out with Cardinal fans, Titans. Fans. Everybody had a good time. Dogs and cats living together. That's it's right. Crazy. Then across the river was the family place. Mm -hmm. You could run a forty. You could have your picture taken with a in the simulator or you know whatever that you were going to do. And so we had both things going on. If you did that right now, you couldn't do it because of the construction. You wouldn't have the whole second half of the... Right. And so what are you going to be able to... And, and the other part of it, too, when you think about it, they will be tearing down and building over there because they will tear down Nissan Stadium yeah. once new Nissan Stadium is fully confirmed and ready. So it may be a while. Yeah. That's true. And but I wanted to... A lot of, and that's going to be an incredible neighborhood over there, too. So. Mm-hmm. But still, come on back eventually. Got Just to. get us in the hopper. Got to. It changed the perception of Nashville 100%. In the eyes of the NFL, anyway. In the eyes of the NFL. Well yeah. played. Mm -hmm. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking the OT people and thanking you for listening to the O and watching the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go.